Hi, I'm Kristen and this is Primal Weight Loss. Welcome if you haven't been here. I hope that you'll explore the other two videos that I've made that don't have any editing and are really hard to watch. What I wanna talk about today is like a huge topic and this is why I have to learn how to freaking edit. So much to say, so much to say, help. So by the way, if anyone wants to just edit these for me for free, I will allow you to do that. What I wanna talk about is calories in, calories out. Eat less, move more. What? That sounds so obvious. Of course that works. Why shouldn't we do that? Well, maybe we should do that. A lot of us probably could stand to eat less and move more. But when it comes to curing obesity, curing, treating obesity, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia, and along with it, virtually every chronic disease. Why doesn't it work? Does it work? I mean, if you go on Facebook or Instagram or wherever, everybody will be like, CICO, calories in, calories out. Duh, just cut calories. And if you don't do it, it's because you're lazy or whatever, right? Lazy and, and gluttonous. You just don't want to move it. You don't want to quit quit eating. And doctors have been telling us that for years. Most of us, that's the advice that we've gotten all our lives. And many of us have gotten it from doctor after doctor, from nutritionists and dietitians. And when you try it and it doesn't work, or you fail to sustain it, um, it's because there's something wrong with you. You are a glutton and a sloth. You're a sinner. If you're just talking about getting a little healthier or moving, you know, losing 10 pounds, maybe, but I am talking about actually treating obesity, curing obesity, reversing metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia, and all of the, this condition of hyperinsulinemia, which goes hand in hand with insulin resistance, which creates this metabolic syndrome, which is, is like obesity and a cluster of other things that you see along with it, hypertension, autoimmune disorders, and polycystic ovary syndrome, the thyroid problems, and heart disease, all of these things go together because they all have the same root cause, which is insulin resistance and the flip side of insulin resistance, which is hyperinsulinemia. Insulin is elevated. If you're obese, the problem with calories in, calories out, it, it doesn't address the insulin issue, not really. You know, more exercise can improve your insulin sensitivity. In my experience and in the experience of most people who are, are dealing with this, it, it isn't gonna be enough. And what you have to do is get that insulin below a certain threshold, which it seems like is different for everyone. Some people can just stop drinking soda and lower their insulin enough that they, that they start losing weight. But let's back up and talk about Let's talk about calories because when you say eat less, move more, eat fewer calories, burn more calories, it sounds so logical. Like, duh, that should, that obviously that works. And that's why this advice I think has persisted for so long. Thermodynamics, bro. You just burn more than you take in. Duh. Why doesn't it work for so many of us? And the first thing that we need to look at is what's a calorie? A calorie, what is it? What does it mean? A calorie is the energy output. When you take this bit of food, this unit of food, you burn it to ash, to carbon in a lab, and then you measure the amount of energy that comes out. Cool. Your body is not a Bunsen burner. Your body takes in the food and breaks it down. It's a chemical process. Calorie is a calorie. No, saying a calorie is a calorie, and you just need to eat less and move more, completely ignores this little thing called biochemistry. How your body chemically processes food, and all of the processes in your body are tightly controlled by hormones. And this is why women have more trouble losing weight because we have this totally different hormone profile that favors fat storage because we have fertility and babies to think about. What do we need to know about insulin to understand this process? Mainly we think, oh, insulin, you know, is for glu glucose uptake in the cell. The other thing that insulin does is it 
it controls fat storage. So if your insulin thermostat is set really high, okay, then your body is going to favor fat storage and it's gonna do that. This is so important, like drop whatever you're doing. Your body is going to favor fat storage. It will prioritize storing fat before it will prioritize giving you energy. That's why fat people get tired. You're fat because you stopped exercising. Well, no, usually you stopped exercising because you're fat. This hyperinsulinemic state is making you tired. And it's also harder to drag your big ass around. I know that. Even if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates, even if they're healthy carbs, your insulin is gonna stay elevated and you're gonna keep storing fat. The other problem is you're gonna stay hungry because that insulin blood sugar cycle is not being addressed. And so some of you may be thinking, oh, well, I saw my friend and she counted her calories for 1200 calories a day and she lost so much weight, oh my gosh. Well, that's great, you know, I mean, in the short term, just calorie reduction and working out, it can work. We've all seen it work. We've also all seen those people gain it all back. If you really look at the data on calorie reduction diets, it is a virtually 100% fail rate. And there's a lot of reasons for that. doesn't control satiety. You're hungry. I know this. You know this probably for watching this video. You've been through it. I remember the feeling of being hungry. Probably the most intense hunger was when I was raw vegan. You have to eat a lot and you never stop being hungry ever. I've been raw vegan for months and I went to my doctor and I said, you know, I thought this was going to make me lose weight. Why am I not losing weight? And she was like, um, uh, are you eating nuts? I was like, yeah, I do. I eat like probably half a cup of nuts a day. And she was like, well, that's probably why nuts are really high in fat. This is why some of us are mistrustful of our doctors when it comes to nutrition and general wellness. Yeah, it's the fat in your raw vegan diet that is the problem. It's not the steady supply of fructose and cellulose being broken down into glucose. It's not your insulin, it's the fat in that half a cup of nuts. <sighs> That's one reason why these, these calorie reduction diets don't work over the long term. Oh, but let me finish telling you about satiety. Ansel Keys, he's a very famous doctor. He is famous for the, what they call a diet heart hypothesis. Saturated fat in our diet, cholesterol in our diet, is giving us high cholesterol, arthrosclerosis, heart disease. It's the reason why we're all dying. We need to cut the fat out of our diets. We need a low fat diet. Problem, of course, as we've seen since that belief became ascendant in like the 60s and 70s is that we've all gotten sicker and fatter because when you take fat out of food in order to keep it from tasting like ass, you have to add something to it. And there's only three macros. There's protein, carbs, and fat. So you add carbs, you add sugar and thickeners and gums and whatever to like yogurt, for example. Take all the fat out of yogurt. It's gross. So you put a bunch of sugar in it. Oh, look, low fat yogurt. It's so healthy. It only has 28 grams of sugar. And this was an epidemic in the 80s and 90s. And it's, it's how I grew up, which is why I got fat. It's part of the cocktail genetics and and environment, all these things are the reasons why I got fat. And so our house was full of health food, slim fast shakes and low fat yogurt and bagels and pretzels, lean pockets and lean cuisine. These high carb, high sugar, low fat foods, Snackwell's cookies, they're fat free cookies. So eat the whole box. It's healthy. It's fine. Ansel Keys did an experiment. I think it was in the seventies and he took some dudes, and I think they were military dudes, and he fed them 1,600 calories a day. And I, most of them were not like really fat, at least by today's standards, definitely not obese. He fed them a 1,600 calorie, heart healthy diet, low fat, high carb. He fed them this diet for, I think it was 16 weeks. They went crazy. It was, it's called the Minnesota Starvation Experiment, one guy tried to cut off his finger to get out of the study, uh, and then he ended up cutting three of them off. 
Another guy had to be hospitalized. Some of them developed psychosis. They never stopped thinking about food. They dreamed about food. When they removed the, the cal caloric restriction at the end of the experiment, what they all did was they stuffed their freaking faces, like 10,000 calories a day, or maybe a sitting, I don't remember, but they, they just ate hard because human beings are designed, it's a survival instinct that when you are hungry, you eat. So a diet that doesn't control satiety is not going to be a successful diet over the long term. Our survival instinct is too strong. I, I might be able to like put you in a cage and feed you Cheerios and iceberg lettuce through it too. Um, but the second that you break out of that cage and you will try because you will develop psychosis apparently, you're going to stuff your face. And that is what happens to people who go on calorie reduction diets. Eventually they stop because it's not natural to be in a semi-starved state over long periods of time. The other side of that coin is that when you go on a calorie reduction diet, you damage your basal metabolic rate. Now, there have been lots of studies showing this. The Biggest Loser study is really famous. I think there've been two papers on the Biggest Loser contestants and how it's even six years later, they burned like 800 calories a day less at rest on average. And as far as we know, there doesn't seem to be, it, it seems like it might be permanent. And Jason Fung has demonstrated in some of his studies and the papers that he talks about that when you fast, you seem to not get that effect. It has something to do with the frequency of, of eating combined with the caloric uh, intake. If you just stop eating, you don't eat for 24 hours or even longer, we actually see your basal metabolic rate go up because fasting is a unique physiological state and things happen in your body when you're not eating at all. But if you are eating, if you're eating like five meals a day or three meals a day, but your caloric rate is down, we do see that damage. So it's almost like your body has a built-in fail safe where it's like, oh, we don't have any food. Let's go into this protective mode where we um, conserve muscle and conserve the metabolic rate. And then there's the exercise factor, right? Like there's the other side. Well, what about moving more? Obviously, if you burn more, then that's good, right? Well, I mean, exercise is really good for you in a variety of ways. It increases insulin sensitivity for one thing. The problem is that we have this idea that we have a lot of control over how much energy our body burns, and we don't. Like the your, your one hour workout is not a lot compared to what your body actually does with, with energy. Most of it is stuff that you can control. When you take in less fuel, your body is very smart and it conserves your energy, whether you want it to or not. You can't tell your body like, hey, raise my temperature, speed up my heart rate. So, you know, Jason Fung uses this really great analogy. So if you're shoveling coal to run a steam engine and one day your boss is like, hey, today we only have half the coal, well, you're not gonna shovel it at your normal rate and speed and your normal coal per shovel full because you're gonna run out. So you have to go slower. You have to maybe pick up less with each shovel if you want it to last all day, if you want that train to keep running. That means that train is not gonna go as fast, you know? Not as much steam is gonna come out because you're smart and you need that train to go all day. You need it to get to your destination. Your body does the same thing and the way it does that is hormones. So when you take in fewer calories, your body responds by dropping you know, how many calories you you expend. And that's that basal metabolic rate that we were talking about. And like I said, it, as far as we know, it might not ever really recover. So then the next time you go on a calorie reduction diet and you drop your calories down to 1200, well, now it's not working as well. Well, that's because your basal metabolic rate is lower now. You have to drop your calories even lower. And then you damage your basal metabolic rate even more. So it's just this horrible, vicious cycle. Meanwhile, you're hungry, hungry, hungry all the time, but your insulin is staying high. You're not actually healing your hyperinsulinemia, which means that insulin is bouncing around your body and doing all this damage to your organs, to your blood vessels. Some of us might benefit from eating less. Some of us might benefit, benefit from moving more. Is that going to cure your insulin resistance? It looks like not, you know, it looks like the, the calories in, calories out model is just a failure. A good thing to do, and this is Gary Tobbs talking, but he says, you know, instead of obsessing over every study that comes out, try to like take a bird's eye view and, and look at the general trend. And if you're on like 
nutritional Twitter like I am, or if you're paying attention to this stuff, you will see that the trend over the past several years, and it's picking up speed now because I've been watching this um, or being involved in it at least since 2010, and the trend is more and more and more evident. Thousands upon thousands of anecdotes, you know, end of one sort of data about the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity rather than the calories in calories out model. It's not about counting your calories. It's about controlling your carbohydrate intake. And for some of us, that means an all animal foods diet. It can be dismaying because you've been given this advice your whole life and you've probably been maybe treated scornfully by doctors and nutritionists and friends and people on Facebook. They talk like it's your fault that you're obese. And the thing is, it's probably not your fault. It's quite possible that you've just got a bad genetic hand dealt to you and then you you ate what was what everyone else was eating. That's what I did. Maybe you even followed like the best nutritional advice you could get and you're still in this position. So it may not be your fault. It probably isn't your fault, but it is your responsibility. Nobody else can fix it for you. But the good news is you can probably fix it. It's a possibility that you may not get down to your absolute ideal weight. I'm still not at mine yet, like getting closer, but I'm still not there. I'm still tweaking things. I'm still trying, but can you be not obese anymore? Yeah, you know, you probably can't. Can you be not even overweight anymore? Yeah, you, know, you probably can. How do you do it? Well, you have to control your insulin. And that means to some extent controlling your carbohydrate intake and probably your eating frequency. That may mean different things for different people. For me right now, I'm losing weight right now at a pretty good clip. And the way that I'm doing it is carnivore, you know, and I've done carnivore off and on, mostly on for a long time, like over a decade now. I am carnivore without dairy and no coffee. And I'm, I'm eating one meal a day, own that that is working really, really well for me. You know, join my group on Facebook, Primal Weight Loss. Send me a message, comment here. I am very motivated to help people do what I did to beat obesity, to get to their ideal weight if they can, to find, you know, optimal health. And not just that, but to beat these chronic diseases that come with obesity and maybe even prevent some of them. We don't really have a lot of data about prevention because no one's really studying a lot of this stuff. And so you get these skeptics saying, where's your you know, randomized clinical trial? Well, who's doing those? It's hard to get funding for those because what drug company wants to know that? You know, I mean, what drug company wants to know if type two diabetes uh, can be prevented by this or reversed by this? Well, when the standard, even the American Diabetes Association, it says it's a chronic progressive disease, you can't cure it. You have all these lies, you're bombarded with it, and not, nobody with money really wants to study whether or not somebody like me who reversed obesity and prediabetes and hypertension and all these things at 40, did I prolong my life? We don't know. But I think, you know, on the face of it, it looks good. <laughs> you know, it looks possible. I guess we'll see, you know, this, I'm an end of one experiment. I'm experimenting on myself because no one else could fix me. I'm going to fix myself and I want to help you do that. Disclaimer, I am not a medical professional. Please consult your physician before beginning this or any other uh, weight loss program. I think that you can take control of your health by learning. And if you want to gain more knowledge, I highly recommend there's so many, so many good books and YouTube videos and podcasts and stuff. But if I had to recommend one thing, it's the book, Why We Get Fat by Gary Taubes. Taubes? I don't know how to say his name. And I'll link it below. Gary Taubes is not, Taubes, is not a scientist. He's a science journalist. But because of that, he's very objective. He's also a really gifted researcher and writer, and he's very good at presenting this stuff for the lay person. I encourage you to read that book. And honestly, if you're not willing to read one little ass book to save your own life, then your odds of being successful are not that high. I'm gonna just keep it real with you. I found that the people who are willing to just pick up one book and read it, you're more likely to actually do this and be successful at it. Not just because of everything you learn in that book, but because 
you are showing that you have a commitment or maybe even even forcing yourself to have that commitment but you really need to do it like pick up the book and read it you will learn so much and pass it on to someone who needs it tactfully if you can because <laughs> the title is why we get fat so be careful with that i hope that you've enjoyed this video i hope that it's been helpful to you in some way if you're just like some internet bro who's like calories bruh I just don't care. Like, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to help people. I see so much suffering. I see so much suffering every single day. It's not just the fat people whose pain that I feel. It's the women suffering from infertility and it's the little kids getting diagnosed with diabetes and it's, it's the people going to the doctor thinking they're healthy and finding out they have heart disease or one day waking up and they, their kidneys are failing. We are surrounded by sickness and suffering and misery and death because we are being given bad nutritional advice. I want it to stop and I want to help you. I want to help you. That is why I'm here and I hope that I have been of some help. And if you need more help, please reach out to me. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for visiting and please uh, find me on Facebook. My group is called Primal Weight Loss and I will see you soon, bye.